Hey, what's going on? I'm here with my main man, Ree Perez. What's up? What's up? What's up? And um, so we just shot a Pay It Forward Friday video that was pretty interesting. So if you haven't checked it out, definitely go to the podcast. Check out Pay It Forward Friday TV with Ree Perez because it was interesting. Was it easy? It was a piece of cake, dude. Piece of cake. <laughs> So it was definitely interesting, and uh, now we're actually cruising back to my place, and we're going to get Re Perez to download us, to give us all his branding knowledge. So he's a phenomenal branding expert and has happened to brand Life on Fire, along with many other huge companies, and uh, he's going to be giving us all kinds of wisdom and good stuff. So you fired up? Fired up. Fired up. Let's all right, this. so we're going to do this. We're going to see you guys in a minute. Hey, what's going on? Nick Unsworth here, and I'm a kick ass business coach, and I'm on an absolute mission to help you find your purpose in life, to help you love what you do for work every single day, to help you be the rock star that you are meant to be, to make more money than you ever thought was possible, and to have more time freedom so you can actually enjoy the life that you're living. I'm here to help you set your life on fire. What's up, my friends? This is Jonathan Budd, and you're watching Life on Fire. Hey, what's going on? Nick Unsworth here, and I am fired up for a very special episode of Life on Fire TV, where we've got my main man, Ree Perez. What's up? Up in the house. Oh, that was a great handshake right there. Boom. And uh, so what's cool about having Ree here is that Ree is the one that helped to brand and create Life on Fire. So um, you will forever, I will forever be grateful for that for you. Um, so what's going to be fun about this episode is uh, we're going to be sharing, Ree's going to be sharing is it your five, was it five steps? Yeah. The yeah. five step branding process that I went through, he's gonna walk you guys through it. So whether you're, you're an entrepreneur, whether mm. you're someone that is fired up to become an entrepreneur, you're going to learn this five step, five phase. Five brand, phases, yeah. Phase, gotta say phase. Five phase branding process that I went through that he's used for companies that range from life on fire size, entrepreneurs, all the way up to huge, massive global brands. And so this guy's got crazy experience. And why don't we start there? What about, so tell us a quick story just about how you got started. Why branding for the people? Why, for why the people? help entrepreneurs? What is your passion and My why passion? do you do this? Well, you know, it, it, quite honestly, I mean, a little over four years ago, four and a half years ago, I found myself uh, working for a top branding firm and I was in Dubai. And so my story kind of evolved into, I went through a series of personal um, a series of events that brought me back to New York and really kind of want to figure out what do I want to do with my life and how do I want to serve people and how do I want to make a difference and I always knew that I just loved branding it was uh, a lot of fun it's very strategic it's creative etc and I just really lost the passion for working with some of the big corporate clients and I kind of looked in another direction and I said well who could really benefit from this kind of thinking and and I really wanted to work with brands that are making a difference in the world, right? Hey and that would be people like you and me, you know, entrepreneurs and small businesses who are really looking to not only make a lifestyle, make money, but also make a big impact and make a difference for people. So, awesome. um, you know, after a series of brainstorming and contemplating, <laughs> meditating and journaling, you know, branding for the people, the concept of it was born and um, it's, been, uh, it's, it's been a journey. Um, yeah. Worth living. Worth living. <laughs> would you say that you're living your life on fire? I would say I'm living my life on fire. I mean, there's always more fire that you can put into the uh, into the burner, but I definitely say I'm yeah. living my life on fire and on purpose. Cool. Yeah. Cool. I love it. I love it. So, um, what's going to be fun about this is that as we <clears throat> go through the branding phases, um, we're going to kind of also journey back to the life on fire brand and how this came together. So we're yeah. going to learn and you guys so that there's tangible takeaways for you guys so that you can implement a lot of what he's sharing today. But it's going to be fun to kind of also dig up and think about what the process was like behind the scenes because it was crazy. Unfortunately, we'll have to relive. I'll have to relive <laughs> that process. But for the benefit of serving you guys, yeah, it's worth we'll, it. <laughs> we'll, it's worth it. We'll go yeah, I it. mean, would you say I was your favorite client? Um, Yes. Yes, you. <laughs> I uh, yeah. I was a little bit, a little bit tricky. I I had my heart set on this blue flame. Yeah. And we'll get into that in a bit. We'll get into I that. Just, I just I I thought I thought that this brand needed a flame so bad, and then, um, Re almost fired me, and uh, I sought out about 
485 versions of the Life on Fire logo before coming to this one. So there's a crazy story behind it, but it's really uh, cool to actually see and hear the branding process. So the very first step. So just picture the folks watching us, listening, maybe in their yeah. car right now. We've got entrepreneurs. We've got people that are aspiring to be an entrepreneur, okay. someone that wants to live their life on fire. They want to, you know, have it one day, you know, be living out their dream. You know, okay. they've got their passion. They're, you know, might be building a coaching business. They might have, you know, love, health, and fitness, and they're going to build a brand online. Maybe they're starting a podcast. Maybe they're starting a radio show. They're monetizing their passion. They're so excited, but then this concept of branding comes in, and they are trying to figure out where to start. So, where's the start? first phase? Ah, well, so here's what I'd like to say. First of all, there's a couple of things that I need to first address before even answering yep. your question and really sets the foundation before you even approach uh, branding, right? So the first thing is you have to get clear on what is a brand and what is branding. So I'm a big advocate of defining your terms so that when you talk about these things, particularly a topic like brand. Isn't it just a logo? <laughs> <laughs> Hence why... I almost fired, Nick. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but um, so the thing is, is that what I've seen over and over is that people use brand and branding and they put it in their marketing and they put it in their, their title. And quite honestly, a lot of it is inaccurate. And you ask people what is brand and they really can't define what a brand is. They talk about the importance of it, the value of it. They might be able to articulate some brands that are their favorites, but very few people can give you a definition for brand. And so... Why I'm bringing that up is I want to give you a definition now, right? So it's a definition that I've been trained and how I've been using um, brand. And brand is... Can I, um, yeah. can I take a stab at it? Yeah, what do you got? So I think the brand is the perception that's created in the minds of our prospects and audience. That's right. That's Boom! Right. That's pretty been good. Been trained really well. So if it's the perception that you want to create in the minds of your audiences, you don't own your brand. Mm resides in the minds of the people that you're communicating <coughs> to, right? So branding then becomes a process. It's a discipline, it's an art, it's a science. It becomes all of that to create and shape and influence that desired perception. And on that, that topic, I think what's crazy is like, if we think about just the importance of this session and yeah. the importance of, of branding, so that's you know what it is. And for me coming into it, what's crazy is that my brain that I had before, which was I painted a dining room wall blue and I took a selfie of myself and that was like my blog image and I just used blue in everything I did. And what's crazy is that <coughs> somehow actually worked for me, which is mm. in, surprisingly enough, right? But what's wild is after working with Ree and, and going through the steps, which you know he'll be giving we'll get you, into, yeah. um, I just want to, to kind of share the, a big picture of what's possible. Sure. And it's like, from my experience, Having this brand has been the biggest differentiator in any other business I've ever had my entire life. Been an entrepreneur for, you know, what, 13 years now. And I've got people who were mentors of mine who I totally respect that are congratulating me. And they're like, I love what you're doing. I love, I love seeing what's going on. And what's wild is that it's not just about the recognition or about the imagery. It's the results we're getting for people. And it's the fact that people, I've had people that want to work for us without pay because they love the movement and the mission. Mm. And all of that is what was created by retaking my entire life story and developing it into life on fire. And so how would you look at, for other people, the impact of brand? So I think about you with Suzanne Evans, you with all these other clients, like how would you describe some of the tangible results of, of branding? Tangible results, well, it's interesting because great question. And part of what I was gonna say in terms of before going into the branding process is you wanna find out what is or what are the business objectives that you want the perception to do for you, mm. right? So typically what I hear is um, the results of going through an in-depth branding process is not only they are able to make money, right? That's a key thing. They're able to charge more or at least charge the value of their services where before they might be undercharging. Um, Three, it's been able to help them increase their uh, conversions in their sales conversations or even online because why? The brand and the branding is makes it easier for you to kind of walk into a prospect and turn them from a warm prospect into a raging fan. So it increases your conversions. The fourth thing that I hear a lot that it helps them do, it helps them to make decisions. 
That is crazy. Right? Yeah, and, and so I remember when I first started working with you, you know, and hearing about that and about actually having a brain that's so powerful that it would influence your decisions. And, you know, I took it for what it was. I didn't really understand it, but it was this one moment where, um, you know, it's my best friend Justin's bachelor party. Um, I had to travel back from California to Connecticut six times in the course of a couple months. And, you know, it's, it's not, you know, financially it was fine. I could swing the, the cash to do it, but it was the time and it was like right in the middle of getting life on fire off the ground. And during like a product launch, I mean, that's kind of a tough time to do it. Sure. And I, I actually called Re and I said, I said, dude, man, like I'm kind of bummed out. Like I've got my best friend's bachelor party. Um, I really want to go, but I don't know how I can swing it with all this stuff going on. And then you looked at me and said, Unsworth, that's what your brand is about and you need to live your brand. And your brand is life on fire, which is living a life that you love and enjoying the process. And that was the big thing that, you know, we'll get into, is, but it was, it's about enjoying the present moments and enjoying the ride right. and not saying, I'm, not, I'm gonna miss my buddy's bachelor party. That happens once in life for this guy. And instead, I'll do a product launch and you know, just miss it. And it was like, you know what, right then and there, that's when that aha moment was with that, you know, I have to live this brand. And what's exciting is that I mean, for years to come, I'm always going to be looking back and I actually make decisions, like you said, thinking about is this not only on brand, but is my life still aligned with that vision? And so if it's like I start working too much, I will have that checkup and I'll be like, you know what? I got to take a step back. Right. I've got to, I've got to do, you know, do those cool things, you know, do those life on fire list or bucket list style things. I've got to do cool stuff. I mean, that's why I built this business and that's the journey. So that's so yeah, cool. And it keeps it. I mean, it's, it would be out of integrity if you're preaching to the people that follow you life on fire and you yourself are not living on life, your life on fire. So it's about being aligned. It's about being in integrity with mm -hmm. who you say you are. So yes, it does help you make decisions. And when you get that crystal clear in terms of who you are and what you stand for and what your brand is about, it allows you to basically say, oh, this is on brand or this is off brand. On brand, off brand, on brand, off brand. So you're able to move through things in your business much faster because you know exactly what you're building and what you're not building. So that's one. I mean, that's, a, that's the fourth benefit. And, and, and I, one, one other last benefit that I'll say is um, it allows people to not only inspire themselves in terms of who they are, right? But it allows them to um, create leadership status or position themselves in the market that attracts more clients that attracts people who want to partner with you, that attracts potential employees who just want yeah. to work with you or work for you. So there, there's a, an attractiveness to who you are when your brand is clearly defined. So that's what a lot of people, those are the common themes I would say yeah. across the board, whether I'm working with like, you know, multiple seven figure businesses to multiple six figure businesses to even startup businesses um, that are able to invest in a little bit more in branding that yeah. that's, that's kind of really what it's about. It's key. So. It's been a huge factor for us. Um, absolutely. So that's been great. So definitely thank you for that. Yeah, you're so you know, I think that's kind of the foundation of the branding conversation. I think uh, we set the stage yeah. and now to drive it home. So how drive about home. phases? All right. So here's one thing I will say is that there's a lot of people that they might sell you branding, but they there's a lot of smoke and mirrors in terms of what the branding process is. So I want to demystify that process for you. And really, I want to close the gap between what people have been Boom. saying about branding and what it actually is. So that, we'll close the gap now. That's How's it. That? All right, That's so it. cool. Let's close it up. Let's close that gap. Um, there's basically five phases in building a brand, right? The first phase really is you want to go through what's called a define or discover phase. Now this phase is really about really understanding the who, what, and why. Okay, what do I mean by that? I mean, who, what, and why, I mean, that's, so basically you're talking about drilling down on, on the customer and figuring out. Yeah. Who's your target audiences? Mm -hmm. Who are your target audiences? What's the problem that you're solving for them? Mm -hmm. And uh, in addition, what's the solution that you're providing, right? And then three is why? Why should they care or listen to you? You know, why should they listen to you over someone else who is solving that same problem. So you can get clear on the who, what, and why. Huge. As sort of defining that core piece of it. You know, then there's some other pieces too in terms of what's your passion? Mm -hmm. What do you want to do? How do you want to spend your time? How do you want to 
you know, make money. Um, and then also in the define phase, it's kind of looking at, um, um, you know, what's, you know, what's important to you. That's yeah. another list. So what's important to you, right? And uh, what's your vision for the business and what's your, who are you out to, what's the impact that you want to make? How do you want to be remembered? So all of this is phase one. It's kind of really getting all that information so that you can crystallize and define, okay, this is what the business that I'm in. This is the business that I'm in, in right? That's, there's so much there. And yeah. what's so interesting is, you know, as a business coach and having gone through hundreds and hundreds of 30 minute strategy sessions with people and consulting clients up to the six if, and even breaking into seven figures with some clients, that every single time there's always a disconnect between their understanding of their target market. Mm. So the who, you know, and, and what's so critical about that is, I mean, I think going through, you know, with the guy at Ree's level, um, the great thing is that when I started this business, it was nice to really tighten all that stuff up from the beginning because mm. it had to. But if, you know, whether you, you know, you're able to hire Ree or a guy like Ree, it's like every single one of us, we have to narrow our niche. We have to be very, very clear on who our ideal target market is because if you're not, then how the heck can you build a brand form if you're not, how the heck can you run Facebook ads or do any of the tactics? So yeah. it all starts with that. And it's kind of like, we had a great call today. So for our Firestarter coaching clients, we featured Re, one of our inside calls. And we had one of our Firestarter elites, you know, Andy Zitzman and uh, AZ, what up? And so this guy's brilliant, he's amazing, he's a ball of, of fire. And we started looking at, you know, Re starts critiquing his stuff and his target market is who is, um, you know, males that are in corporate, they make great money, but they're just missing something. There's, there's a piece in life that's just not there, and he wants to fulfill that and inspire them to start their business or to, you know, to coach them. And then meanwhile, the brand was purple, you know, and it's kind of catered, you know what I mean? It, 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 it just it didn't almost seem magenta, to Almost magenta, right? It was like, uh, you know, almost a little pinkish. And, and so what, what he texted afterwards, which I thought was really cool, is that he came back and texted that um, he was thinking about the brand of, designing it of what he wanted when really it's about what his audience wants. And that's a piece of it. Just to add, yeah. um, and just to qualify what Nick is saying too, because there's a piece, obviously you want to have a brand that you connect with because it's your brand, right? Yeah. Um, and you want to also look, you want to round out the perspective to be able to look at what's going to appeal to your target audiences. So there's a, two things going on there. It's like, what do you like? And then just because you might like flames, for example, it this doesn't guy. necessarily mean that you need to put flames um, all over your logo, for example. So that's one. And then two, and we even told this Daisy, is that, and I tell this a lot too with a lot of my clients, is you don't want to put all the pressure of your brand on your logo, right? Mm. So you, there's other things, other ways that you can um, express um, what you're trying to communicate to your target audiences. So yeah. So that's all part of in phase one is just getting all that information because phase two is really organizing all that information into to a strategy. And I think before we jump to phase oh, yeah, two, I, I just want to like, when I, when I was going through phase one, I think what was powerful and, I, and for you guys, like I want you to, to spend the time to really drill down and do the exercises. So, you know, this is, would be a challenge right now if you're watching this uh, or if you're listening to it, you know, take the action now. It's like the, you know, the, Success is all about the speed of implementation. So if, you, if you're learning something from Reed today, let's put it into action. So don't let another day go by or another month go by where you're like, yeah, I'll figure out that target market later. Because for some bizarre reason, we don't want to think about it. We don't yeah. want to do it. And it's a real drag to do it, mm -hmm. but physically write it out. And if you were to describe your target market, make it one person, you know, mm. for John Lee Dumas, it's Jimmy, you know, like bring it all yeah. the way down to one person, describe them everything from age, but also, you know, what's their life like? And you want to think about your marketing that way. And it's going to help the brand. The other big thing is this working with you forced me to think about my life as a whole. I mean, mm. you know, we went back to my story, you know, we uncovered things that, you know, what right. my mission is, you know, I, I had always been on a mission to help people. And I had always been on a mission to give back and I always donated money and did things, but that wasn't the full alignment that I have now. My life is completely different than what it was not more than a year and a half ago because of this. And wow. the reason is because of that alignment. Yeah. And I realized that my story, my background is something that is, it's, it's, I, I made it my mission in life 
to sell a business by 30. Why? Because I wanted to have a lifestyle where I could have a family one day, that I could give back, I could do cool things. And that's because of, you know, my dad inspired me like crazy. You know, hardworking guy, but he was so busy with his job and I wanted to not be as busy. And meanwhile, I ended up being a workaholic through mm. my 20s. And, you know, after selling the business and then having money, it was like, well, that's not it. I realized that my mission is to help people live their lives on fire. My mission is to help you find your purpose so that you have the alignment so that you can go on and live that life on fire. All that stuff was, was really solidified in that first phase. Mm. And without that, we wouldn't have ended up here. So it's like, what is your purpose? You know, what is your movement? You know, like Suzanne, our you know, business coach said to me one day, she said, well, Nick, what pisses you off? What's your stance? And it's like, get really clear on that stuff because yeah. that's, that's, you pulled all that out of me in that session. That, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> but, you know, and that's what, that's what, that was the foundation. So yeah. any other tips just as far as like, if, if they think about, you know, if someone's unclear of their purpose or their passion and they're like, <clears throat> they, you know, they invest tens of thousands of dollars to work with you and they're sitting down and they're like, they're, they're an entrepreneur, but they're just not really like super passionate. Like, how would you help guide them to? To figure out their purpose to or passion. To figure out their purpose. Well, um, so there's a few different things to, to arrive at that same answer. But I would start with um, what's your dream, right? What's the big dream? Um, that if, you, if money wasn't an issue, what would you be doing with your time and your life? So that's one way, one place to look. Mm -hmm. Another place to look is, and a lot of, uh, a lot of you talk about this as well, mm -hmm. is like what... Um, what have you gone through that you've triumphed over or that you had to deal with in the past that you learned from or you gained some insight on how to solve that problem that you went through? You know, and that looks like a lot of different things for a lot of different people, but turn that, now yeah, this is off with the assumption that you've actually triumphed over that <laughs> issue, right? Yeah. But turn that into something to be of service for other people who might be going through that same set of problems, okay? So that's another place to look is, what can you provide value to, to other people? So that's those huge. are two. Yeah. That's, that's huge, just a, an example of that, you know, would be AZ who we just talked about. We looked at, back at his story, and then I asked him, you know, what's his stance? And, you know, he was in a corporate job, he was unhappy, that led to drugs, addiction, the guy hit rock bottom you know, got sober and now his mission is to help other people free themselves from that corporate, you know, that corporate lifestyle if they're not happy where they've got the money but they've got the house and the kids and this and that but they're really not happy inside. Yeah. So his biggest challenge in life is his biggest opportunity with his brand. Yeah. You know, we've got a couple, um, you know, foster kids that we're working with. Their biggest challenge was the fact that they grew up, you know, without parents and as orphans and homeless. And what's so beautiful is that that biggest challenge is now their biggest opportunity was starting a podcast. Mm. That is now their movement, their stance, their and what will grow into their brand. That's awesome. So, um, so that's cool. So I think you know, really drill down on that, and I challenge you, if you're watching or listening to this, take this on and write those things out, because if you don't do it now, when are you going to do it? And even if you're in business, I want to encourage you to still write it down because it's usually not tightened up yeah. enough. So cool. Here's the third one, by the way, before we yep. go on to phase two, is how do you want people to remember you? So Ooh, fast that's a, forward. That's a good one. Fast forward. Like someone's going to be doing a Wikipedia on you or someone's going to write your, not to be morbid, right? But they'll write your obituary. But how do you want people to remember you? That's awesome. And then work backwards from there. Okay? What's your legacy? What's your what legacy? What are you building? We all have these crazy, unique gifts and talents inside of us. And if you're watching this, usually people are watching a show like this because they want to feel that feeling. They want to think back to when they're kids yeah. and they're dreaming and there's something there. There was something, they, there's something that they want to do with their lives. And that's the point of this entire show right. and us today is to call and bring that out of you, light that fire, and to know that anyone can do it. Yeah. So if you have step two, phase two, of course. Yeah. Cool. All right. All right. So, wow, we got five phases. So phase two is really about, it's called strategy in, the, in consulting lingo, but it's really about sort of taking, once you've defined all those things, is now you want to create. Right, and that is sort of creating the the brand, uh, creating all the layers of your brand. So that goes from what's about what are the value propositions, uh, which are what are the sort of the day to day benefits that people get in working with you, what are the key messages that you need to focus in and communicate 
to address uh, the problems that you solve for people? What's the personality of your brand, the, the, what's called the brand voice or the brand attributes? What's the perso personality? You know, are you more of like a Ellen DeGeneres? you know, sort of entertaining kind of personality, or you're more like a Jon Stewart, opinionated, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like you can, you can pull from even just like celebrities that we all know and just kind of articulate what's the personality of that brand, of that person, and what are the ones that are more unique to you? So in defining that, and then looking at what's called your brand values, which is how does your brand need to behave in order to create that desired perception? You know, are you going to be, you know, kicking your feet up in the air? Or, you know, are you going to be wearing blazers, wearing blazers and T-shirts? Got my and, first blazer because of this guy. Hey, you know, it's all good. I like to have that sort of impact <laughs> on you. But you know, no love problem. the T-shirts, love the look. It's he's told, you know what I love about Nick is, if which by the way, this is a really a plug-in for Nick is because not only did we do the work that we did, and I'm kind of sharing a lot of this, but he really took it on and he really created his own. Because whenever you, if you work with someone or if you do this on your own, it's like at the end of the day, you're the walking, talking advocate of your brand. And you have to be able to make those kinds of decisions on a daily basis on how do you want to be perceived? And just with Nick up-leveling himself, um, purely because it's consistent with his brand, it's been a massive game changer yeah. for you, hasn't it? Yeah, I think in, in this phase too, getting clear on the problems you solve for people so what's interesting is like every entrepreneur, every company, you know, especially if you're in like any kind of coaching or service-based business, um, you know, in the info marketing space or internet marketing or coaching or mm. it's like, or podcasting, it's like you are completely, your income, your paycheck, the great thing is that it's a blank check. You can write your own, but it's all based on the value that you provide for people. So the value you provide for people is always going to come back to what are the problems that you solve for them. So if you get clear in phase one on who they are and what their problems are, then in phase two, it's like if I'm clear on how I'm going to solve them and what makes me yeah. unique, you know, and that unique selling proposition, you've heard it a million times, but what is it for you? What makes me a better business coach than everyone else? And what makes us different? You know, and we've got to be clear on that or else, you know, we blend in. You blend in, right. So now here's, this is, this is probably, this is a writer downer, but there's three types of benefits that people get when you're sort of creating your brand, you always want to look at what's the higher order benefit that you provide when solving people's problems, right? So there's three types of benefits. So one type of benefit are functional benefits. This is like what your brand does. Like, uh, you know, you help them to, I don't know, open up their business, mm -hmm. right? Or start their business. These are functional areas, functional benefits. Then there are benefits that are called economical benefits. This is what your brand does in terms of money or time. So you're either helping people to save time, um, to maximize their time, to make more money, or to, you know what I mean? There's a, it's measured in terms of money and, and time. Then the third kind of benefit is, our, our, excuse me, our mo emotional benefits. So how does your brand make you feel? Now, I'm sure you've heard this phrase, is that people don't remember what you do for them they remember how you make them feel. And why I'm talking about emotion, and usually brands really focus on what's that emotional benefit and that connection that you wanna create with the people that you're talking to. Why? Because as human beings, mm -hmm. we are powered by emotion. Every single purchasing decision that we've made is based on some form of emotion. And if you can connect with people on an emotional level, not only will you um, connect with them on an emotional level, but you will make more money, you will increase your conversions, you'll relate to them. So that, that is, is powerful. Yeah. That is so powerful. And I think about, um, get goosebumps thinking about, I don't know why, but it, it's because it's so powerful because uh, I think about, I did a presentation at Maria Andros's event, okay. right, on Facebook marketing. And then Suzanne, a business coach um, that was coaching me, um, she critiqued it. And she said, Nick, that was the worst effing presentation I've ever seen. You do. See me do or whatever. And she was like, Maria had the entire audience for two days in this dreamlike emotional state where they then went on to purchase her coaching program that was $36,000 a year. And you came in and asked them to think. You asked them to basically pull out their calculators and to think about Facebook advertising and, and all these steps. And, and you made them think. 
And people don't buy when they think. They buy in emotions and how that makes them feel. And what's crazy is that two days later, I did a webinar um, product launch on fire. Uh, we have one uh, actually coming up, and I'm sure there will be a replay floating around. But that webinar, I completely overhauled it. Mm -hmm. And I went from instead of teaching like tactics, 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 instead I went inspirational. I talked about the journey and some of the ups and the downs, and I really connected based on emotions as to why we're doing this, like why I'm a business coach and the yeah. impact it makes. And, and what's crazy is that that was the most successful webinar I've ever done in my entire life. And it's all because of the emotion. And it's like, you know, it's like, you know, the guy that just gets divorced that, you know, makes six figures a year, but he's kind of hit this midlife crisis because he just got divorced and goes and buys the flashy black M3 BMW. It's based on emotions. It's based right. on how he's perceiving he's going to feel driving that thing to fill that void from that divorce. But it's the gas mileage it's the safety ratings, it's the mm. rationalization that's going to, you know, convince himself that it's a, it's okay, it's a good buy, right, you know? Right. But it's the emotions that, that do it, and that is so key. How do, how do I make you feel right now? Are you Right now, I feel good. <laughs> a little hot in here, though. <laughs> you know, obviously, I emotion sold uh, Nick, no. But did. seriously, in working with Nick in that process, it's kind of really getting it to the core of that emotion, right? That whole, not only just a life on fire, but really creating a journey that's worth living and that mm. whole story that's built out and that's all emotion you know mm. and some layers you could talk about emotional benefits or even aspirational benefits because even something like a journey worth living is really you know there's a, an immediate emotional benefit but there's also something very aspirational about that right mm. yeah so anyway process wise that is like what is that for you what's that higher level emotional benefit you know like so Harley Davidson you know, they're in the business of motorcycles, but their brand is freedom on the open road. So what's that concept? What's that emotion for you that's going to drive every single decision that you make about how you build out your business and how you go to market, um, the kind of programs you develop, how you spend your time, how you make your money, how you serve people. So that's all in, in phase two. And that's a that's huge, heavy piece of it, right? It's deep. Should I go into phase it's emotional. three? Should I go into phase I three? I think so. I think, are you guys ready? What do you I, think, Eric? He's good? Yeah, we're good. He's right. All right, we're going to do it. All right, so phase three, um, for some people, they say it might get exciting because we start moving into the creative piece of it. And this is usually when, you know, you write a creative brief and you ask the, the, the client or, you know, you really kind of look and say, well, what are some of the parameters that you would want to have in the creative brief? So let me just um, expand a little bit more on this. So phase three actually has five different legs to it, okay? And it really is sort of the, what's called the express phase. Like you're expressing that which you've already created. So there's five ways to express your brand. And the first one is to um, is through digital, your digital strategy, mm -hmm. right? That includes your website, your social media, your marketing. I mean, the online marketing. So digital strategy. The second thing is verbal strategy. And it's actually not in this order. I'm just giving you all five. The second thing is your verbal strategy. What do I mean by that? The the language that you're using, the tone of voice, you know, the vocabulary, the, the way that you name your products and programs, you know, like, so Nick, once we got clear on sort of the life on fire, then it's like, okay, he wants to create a book club. So we're going to call that page burner, right? And the coaching programs, we're going to call them the fire starters, right? Yeah. So even just the language that he's using is all based on sort of getting clear on that overall master brand strategy. So that's verbal. For some people, it could be a tagline, right? So that's all language. The third thing is visual, which is we had we had the most fun when it came to the visual process, right? It's, it's how do you translate that concept into a look and feel, into a logo, into a color palette, typography, and all that sort of stuff. So is there anything you want to say about that That process? was a trip. That was a trip. So what's interesting is like coming into it, I had what I perceived, what I thought like branding was, and it took some time. It took quite a bit of time for me to really um, fully just let go and let Reed do his job. So I was trying to, you know, one thing as an entrepreneur, it's like, you know, I had been screwed so many times by mm. suppliers and partners and, you know, and it was just like, you know, they never delivered to a level that ever made me happy, right? Mm. And this guy far exceeded that, but I, I was a little resistant. I was a little bit tough to work with, a little bit of perfectionist syndrome. And so I, in my head, I just had this vision of this blue flame. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know why I just pictured blue It was flame. in the creative brief. He's like, I want a blue flame. It's got to be in the logo. 
and, and the logo had to be cool enough to tattoo yeah, somewhere on my body. that's the criteria. By the way, for any of you, if you're a designer, if you have any kind of design background, <laughs> you know that it's probably the worst creative brief that you could possibly have gotten. <laughs> so it's got to be good enough to tattoo. Yeah. It's liter and, I, and I'm in the process of, of getting leaned up to then get that <laughs> tattoo. So it's happening. And it's going to be backwards so I can see it in the mirror. Right. But um, so I was just kind of stuck on, on having that, you know, that logo of, you know, of a flame and I, how I was going to incorporate that in other things. And so, you know, he came back with, you know, I looked at other websites that I thought were cool. We had all kinds of exploration processes and he had these cool things like mood boards and I picked different directions. And then every time you came back, it just, it didn't stand out right away. And I just didn't like any of the revs. And then I was a little bit nuts and I, I actually took the creative brief, went to 99 designs yeah, and got story. over 485 logo revisions made because I wanted to nail it. And um, they all had icons, they all had different things and swag around them because that's what I think most people think that they need. Most people feel like there's got to be like we, with AZ today, right? On that coaching call, he's got game time, right? And But the A was not just an A. The A was an A with a thing that looked like it had a B on it. And he asked AZ, you know, what's that stand for? And it, quite frankly, thought it just looked cool, but it didn't stand for anything. And that it, it, it wasn't helping the brand. So after all that have stuff... A story. You know, there's no, story. you know, is there a story to your brand? If anything, you have so many layers that, where you can tell the story about your brand. Even just this yeah. whole conversation, right? There's a whole story, even the building of the process, uh, the process of building the brand. But anyway, if there's no story to it, then mm -hmm. it's kind of flat. Anyway. Yeah, and, and so from that process, um, what totally made me realize, and what I love about Rhea is that when you're talking about building a brand or getting these, these tips, it's about building something that's way bigger than I could have even conceptualized. Mm -hmm. And so that's what's cool about hiring this level of a professional is that it, he up-leveled my life by doing that where I'm thinking a blue flame is going to only take me so far versus, you know, what he built out with, with this bad boy is, <laughs> is it, it's something that when you showed me life, the Life is Good company, they're a hundred plus million dollar company and they've got a whole brand around Life is Good. And when I looked at it and he showed me on Google Images and I saw dozens and dozens of variations of the text Life is Good that was the same but all the stuff around it was different based on the t-shirts and mm. some had dogs and some had sunshine things. And like, I'm like, oh, okay, well, I guess it could just be text. <laughs> and then I did lobby for the, uh, for the dot. He did though. ask for a flame. We did reconcile. This, this was my little, my little nugget there, the little I flame thing a, there. I give him a little bone. But, but it's, it's just crazy. I think that from that process, you know, getting clear on all these things leading up to it, and then making sure that you've got someone that really understands this stuff that can take it and put it together into the visual system that you're looking for. Yeah, so whether or not you're ready to hire someone like me or another brander or, or, or if you're gonna to go to 99 Designs, it doesn't matter, but the thing is that you wanna be able to do is to be able to know how to talk to a designer, which is why I'm telling you these things in terms of you know, the concept and the higher order benefit and all that sort of stuff, right? So, um, so anyway, that's the visual yep. piece of it. So that's the third leg within phase three. The fourth leg is sales and marketing. And so I don't teach sales, I don't teach marketing, although branding is a marketing related discipline, but you have uh, business coaches like Nick who, um, who understand business and they also understand really good marketing, particularly you know, Facebook, online marketing, right? So your brand informs your sales and your marketing efforts. And then the fifth piece is uh, the experience. You know, what's the experience that you want to create? So I'll just recap them real quick. So within phase three, there's what's called the, the um, express phase. You express your brand through digital, verbal, visual, sales and marketing, mm -hmm. and experience. It's pretty simple, right? So all those five things really are driving how you're going to create that perception in the marketplace. I like it. I dig it. And then so on that um, section, um, is that where we would, you would like think about it as not just the logo, it's the creative. And that's all part it. of the visual. Within, within the visual phase, you kind of look at the whole experience. Yeah, the whole visual that, language. I found that so interesting. It's like, I mean, it's, you know, it's easy to just think about a brand as a logo. And what's so cool is that meanwhile, you look at your work with us, with other people, it's always a whole package. You know, it's like <clears throat> the fact that we've got these bars around all the content. So when it says on the, on the podcast Excuse icon, me. entrepreneurs living the dream, that's very intentional in a box. And it's funny is that when we went to some designers to get one of those things, 
created, they didn't know that about our brand, you know? And it's like, no, we need that there because that's, that's how we roll, it's our mm -hmm. brand. But when you do that and then your business cards look like that and your letterhead and it turns into what, you know, what you call a, a visual, visual language. system. Yeah, system, yeah. And all the way down to the colors that we use, how we do our photos. And by doing that, it's like, Nick, do you want to just be like everyone else in the hmm. space or do you want to be in a category of your own where everyone comes and copies you? And I'm like, <laughs> I want the latter. And he's like, okay, well, mofo, we'll get rid of the flame. <laughs> Let me do my job. Uh, that's so, that's what I said. so that was cool. So, I mean, yeah. you know, thinking that it's, you know, how can you be unique and stand out? And that's what's going to really, you know, attract people, make that money from it. And you're doing it, you know, he's doing the thing. So, you know, I'll tell you in terms of phases four and five, just to kind of round that out is like, listen, you know, I can really go deep into this, but four and five is really about sort of now that you're expressing your brand, you want to amplify, right? So amplify all that you're doing, amplify what's working course correct what's not working you know phase five is really about sort of managing your brand and 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 fostering that so without going into full depth on that I just wanted to lay out the overall view and mm -hmm. and you could say that why we talk about brand being a lifestyle is phase in four and five it actually never really ends because you're always looking at how can you amplify something in your in your brand and how can you extend it um, how can you manage it I mean as entrepreneurs we we have to take risks you know, sometimes you'll fail at something and sometimes you'll like knock it out of the ballpark. So managing your brand is allowing you to be able to kind of look at, you know, what can I test out? What can I give myself permission to fail in and then learn from that and then being able to innovate something else or stop doing something or continue to do something. Mm. So that being said, those are kind of like the five phases of the brand building continuum. It's not necessarily rocket science. You just need to do things in the right sequence of activities and you have to look at it very holistically. That whole layering of process that I just mentioned to you, my intention here is for you to just kind of really not be too overwhelmed with the brand building process and to not diminish the process to just a brand being a logo because you really compromise and you miss out on what's truly possible. Yeah. You know, using Nick as an example. So it's a whole bigger, <clears throat> so much more to it than just that. And you know, to take the time and it's like, you know, if you're on a shoestring budget, maybe a couple tips, you know, for some folks that on that shoestring budget as you're, you know, building, it's like, you know, um, you know, in the beginning, you know, figuring out the phase one and two, the great thing is that you can d dive in and spend your time to get yeah. clear on that. And then it's like, you know, I think you, you brought up some great points today in that coaching call is, is you know, li making sure colors and fonts and all that stuff is very linked. And then yeah. also on the visual side, it's like, you know, you mentioned photography. Yeah. As a, as a game changer for someone on a small budget, it's like getting solid photos, you know? And so why is that important for someone and how they can leverage that even if they don't have the budget for a big old brand? Uh, which part, the photos? The photos, yeah. You know, because it's, uh, there's a couple things. One, no one can really copy how you look. Yeah. Right? So you're uniquely you. <laughs> not I everyone can have this time. I mean, they might try. <laughs> this this tan is not easy. I mean, I've been you trying. You wouldn't think I live in San Diego. <laughs> What, you're not tan enough? Oh, well, maybe next to me. I'm going to get a spray. I'm going to have Cheeto, <laughs> Cheeto dust all over me. So, with the exception of um, Nick's tan, you know, <laughs> you might not want to cop. Anyway, but the point is really, is to, in all seriousness, is that um, uh, photographs are a really great way to express your personality. You know, um, I know that we always say a pictures are worth a thousand words, and, and I know Marie Andrews talks about, you know, video being worth a, a million words, yeah. right? But images are so much wor worth more than sometimes the, the language that you use, the copy that you're using. So that's one good reason. Is and then, um, so it's, it's easy to own. Two, you'll save so much more money than buying all the stock photography. And three, if you are going to use stock photography that's free or ro you know, royalty free, why would you want to use that kind of photography? Because it's so literal or cheesy or tacky or, mm -hmm. you know, it's just my opinion. And then, and then the fourth thing too is that if you hire a good professional photographer, you'll have so much more mileage to be able to use that photography across all of your, you know, marketing communications. So for those reasons alone, that's why I'm a big advocate of getting your own custom photography Huge. for your brand. And that was that was you know you encouraged me to do that. Um, as a result, I went and got you know Nikki and Candela, yeah. who's a phenomenal <laughs> photographer out here in San Diego, and she she dug deep. I mean, she got to know, I spent a whole like day with her just understanding the business. Yeah. 
so that when she did the photos, it wasn't just, you know, headshots. I mean, it was very... I didn't think I called you before the photo shoot. I yeah. Said, oh, I had him with the photographer and they're making, where are we going? You know, where, where are you guys so Here's going? the thing. This is a tip for you. If you're going to do a photo shoot, don't aim for just your standard, you know, portraiture shots. You know what I mean? Like the you know, posing as you. So if you look at all of Nick's branding and the photographs, it's all him in context of an environment. You know, I mean, he's like on the ocean, on the ocean, fire pit in front of me, you know? <laughs> It's cool. It's actually amazing to see that in person again. I'm so used to seeing it in the picture. <laughs> but yeah, so seeing Nick's expression in fo and photographs on the beach and so forth, it really paints a, a better picture you know, for you. So I highly recommend that yeah. process. And you know, before we wrap up, a um, couple things. I think that this kind of brings up a topic that is always on the minds of entrepreneurs, which is you know, personal brand versus a company brand. And so I've had a great like, experience in that department. I'd love to get your feedback. But on my side, it, you know, I decided to build Nick Unsworth, and that was my that was my my whole business was Nick Unsworth. Now, granted, I had an LLC and all that, but no one knew about it. It was just I had a Facebook page and a blog, and I had you know blue colors and selfies, and that was my personal brand. But I took that. What I loved about it is that having a personal brand, in my opinion, is great for networking. It's great for obviously getting your name out there, and it you know it leads to speaking engagements. And for me. In the Facebook marketing industry, it helped me to rise up that industry really fast. So I think that for most entrepreneurs, if you go the personal brand route and you're like, I'm an expert in dot, 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 then it's an easier path to cash, an easier mm -hmm. path to success. And then what's interesting is that when you're running ads on Facebook, we've actually tested and proven that when we ran the identical ad, same photo, same copy, same everything, and we ran the ad from the Nick Unsworth Facebook page and went out. And then we ran the ad on the Life on Fire Facebook page. The one from the Nick Unsworth page was only $2 per email opt-in, per lead, basically $2 a lead. One from Life on Fire was $2.60 per lead. Mm. That's crazy. So not only is personal brand a little bit easier to get started, it also, because um, it's connection. Because when you're marketing, it's all about connection and trust. And like the photos you're saying, they can see you, your personality. Yeah. And so that also translates to, into, into lead costs. Now, my face was on both sets of pictures. The only difference was where it came from. It came from Life on Fire, a company, or it came from Nick Unsworth, a business page. And so we've actually proven that down to dollars and cents. Now, the objection I always would get is, Unsworth, you're building out this business. How You can't sell it one day. And I was like, yeah, I'll figure it out. And I even licensed my own name to the company that bought the business. And so you absolutely can sell a business that, it, you know, having a personal brand, like sometimes if you're thinking about with, you know, whole journey with live, live yeah. you know, journey worth living, it's like, you know, yeah, you can plan for the sale that may or may not happen 10 years from now, but what if it doesn't happen? Why not give yourself the most chance, you know, likelihood of success now? So I think that in a lot of cases, if you are an expert at something, a personal brand is so valuable. Um, and my shift to this company is the next rev. It's the next evolution yeah. of what I want to do. Because now it's, I was the main guy and I'm still the main guy, but my vision now is different where it's like, I want Life on Fire to be a platform yeah. where our fire starters, our own clients, as these guys are going to see, that our own clients were promoting, that they are going to be the ones that we're featuring on Life on Fire TV, that they're the ones that are going to be doing blog posts and we're going to be raising them up and raising them up as coaching our clients and different things. And it's going to be a little bit of a slight sidestep. You know, it's like, as I want to have a family one day, I'm building all this up so that I can bring on other people and I can have more leverage in my life. So it was a kind of a, a process. But what's your take on personal brand? Personal brand mm. and versus corporate. All right, so here's my short version. So kind of how I laid out the whole process for you, like all those phases. Well, here's my point of view. There's one brand, okay? There's one brand. Remember, I defined brand being a desired perception. So there's one brand, and then you have different extensions and layers of that same brand. So whether you want to call it a personal brand or a corporate brand or a product brand or an event brand or, you know, whatever, it, stitch, it still should all be worded, excuse me, it should still all be based on the same brand. It's just an extension. Mm. Now, so my point of view about the whole thing is what you're really talking about is naming strategy and marketing strategy, yeah. right? Not so much brand strategy. I mean, and there's a piece of it too in terms of how do all the brands and sub-brands fit with one another. But, you know, if it works better from a marketing perspective 
to market Nick Unsworth, for example, a, hu a person, because that's what people buy, they buy from people, then that works, um, that works for marketing, right? Mm -hmm. If it works to create life on fire as a brand because maybe five, 10 years you want to sell it, then do that. Knowing that they're, you know, and, but quite honestly, you can actually sell Nick's, Nick Unsworth, the company, kind of like, yeah. you know, Oprah, right? Like Oprah, anything that she touched turned into gold. Yeah. So there's so many different strategies. So, but my point of view overall is there's one brand mm -hmm. and yeah, there's different cool. layers of it. Okay. I so. love it. I love it. Well, before we wrap up, <laughs> we've got one last question and then we're going to ask for how people can find you sure. online. And so the last question is, uh, what's one thing that most people don't know about Reed Perez that you're gonna share publicly with the world. Wow, way to put me on the spot. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> way to put me on the spot. One thing, goodness. That maybe I wouldn't know. <laughs> One thing that maybe Eric would know. One thing that, shoot, maybe not that many people know. The dirty little secret. The skeleton <laughs> in the closet. And Could be cut. anything though. <laughs> Are we done here? I'm out of here. Rips the mic off. Uh, Could be well, something cool. Anything? Something cool. Well, you know, that most people don't know. You know, I'll say something fun. <laughs> it's going to be good. I don't know if it's going to be good. But, you know, in seventh grade, in seventh grade? Yeah, I used to be a break dancer. What? <laughs> and they used to call me Break and Re. Break and Re? <laughs> really? Yeah, I mean, I obviously did it for fun. I wasn't like a professional break dancer or anything like that. But, you know, you might see sort of this branders on speaking on stages and consulting but you know i can hang what are the odds we get a little i ditty? can dance i could do a little <laughs> i have to ask the question they're all wondering it what are the odds i mean just a quick Who little knew? like you know i used to have the parachute pants and everything oh man that's you what know, you need you know you had some uh, yeah well, yeah <laughs> of course the hammer pants <laughs> the hammer pants um, what are the odds of getting you to do an intro for Life on Fire in hammer pants, just like, uh, just doing like the... Zero to nil. All right. Well, I, guys, I tried. Can't say I didn't try. Well, uh, Reed Perez, my man, my buddy, awesome. Thank you so much for being here. And so how do they find you got, Find you online? How, where do they go to connect? Yeah, it's pretty simple. I mean, obviously, you can just go to brandingforthepeople.com. So that's branding, B-R-A-N-D-I-N-G, and then for, F-O-R, not the number four, um, thepeople.com and uh, you'll learn sort of a lot about uh, you know sort of who we are and what we're about our manifesto you'll see you know people and clients that we keep company with like Nick Unsworth and all the people that you had mentioned like Maria and Suzanne um, but uh, yeah feel free to check us out brandingforthepeople.com and there's some uh, interesting resources and articles and tips that we like to share you know with our followers so uh, again my name is just Reed Perez and Branding for the People. Bang 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 well, guys, I'm fired up that you tuned in here, and, uh, and I would love to get your feedback. So if you want to just share what is an aha that came out of this today, or you know, if you have any questions, what's a question or mm. what's an aha, we're here to help. If you don't ask, can't really help out. So um, just go back to uh, lifeonfire.com. You can find this show here with Ree Perez, and ask a question right there. We've got a Facebook comments, and the great thing is that by doing that, not only are they going to ask a question and then get some coaching and some help from this guy, um, potentially this guy, um, but the other thing too is that for the month of April, we're running a contest. Every engagement, the comments, tweeting about this show, sharing it, cool. we're rewarding all those behaviors and uh, we've got some cool prizes. So if you're watching this after the fact, still go to lifeonfirecontest.com because every month we've got a crazy cool nice. on-brand contest nice. where we're doing cool stuff. Nice. And so also me and this guy, we shot a Pay It Forward Friday video today too. Yeah, so check it out. Check it out. It's pretty crazy. It was, we almost got Don't, thrown out. I can't let you spoil it. It was a little crazy though. It was a little crazy. It was a little crazy. It got hot in there. But all right, you guys have a great rest of your day. Ree, thanks again, brother. Thanks guys. We'll see Peace you soon. Out. Cheers. All right, cheers. I'm here to help you set your life on fire.